Hello, my name is Neil Lyons from Skyway Software, and this is part two of the JSF and Prime Faces code generation screencast. If you haven't seen part one, part one can be found on the My Eclipse for Spring YouTube channel. In part one, we set up the web project, we generated the JSF and Prime Faces software components, we deployed the application to Tomcat, we reviewed the running application, and we reviewed the generated code. In part two, we're going to give you some tips for customizing the generated software components and leveraging some of the capabilities of JSF and Prime Faces. So next what I want to do is actually uh, give you some hints of some of the places where you might want to start making some changes to the application. So if we go back to the application and we look, look at, for example, the view customers list, one of the things that you'll notice is that this list is kind of uh, that the field names or the column names are very long. So if you want to actually you know, make these shorter, um, we, you, know, you could obviously go to the XHTML file and modify them or put whatever you want there. But all of these headers are actually you know, defined you know, using resource bundles. So what I can do whoops, is actually go into the resources folder, go into the bundles and open up the customer resources file. And from here, I can start to modify those and make them more succinct um, so that they fit in the table better. So I'm going to go ahead and, and change a couple of these here. And hit save. And then I'm going to we'll go ahead and, and shorten some of these as well. So we'll make the address one and address two. So now I can go ahead and um, well, it looks like my application is going to automatically restart, but I'll just restart it anyway. So now that I've made changes to those to those res to that resource bundle, um, now when the application restarts and I go back to that particular UI, we will see the new titles up there. So in the resource bundles, that's just this is just one example of where those particular you know um, names are being used. But by changing them in the resource bundles, they're being those changes are being propagated out to all of the different UI you know set places in the UIs that are le referencing those names. So that's one uh, little tip um, that you may, you know, if you, if you need to kind of fine tune the UIs, that's one of the things that you can do to, to, to do that. And, and it really kind of, I wanted to emphasize the fact that we're using resource bundles for almost everything and anything and everything that we can in our, uh, in our, and the applications that are generated by My Eclipse for Spring. So one of the other things I wanted to point out is um, let's go and uh, take a look at uh, payments. And if I want to create a new payment, one of the things you'll notice in here is that there is for the payment date we're automatically scaffolding it to be use the uh, the uh, prime faces calendar widget and but the default implementation uh, will automatically pop up a calendar whenever focus is on uh, a calendar field so what I can do um, you know if if you want one you can start to customize this maybe you don't want the pop-up calendar maybe you want the calendar to be in line all the time so one of the ways that you can do that is by going to the uh, create payment component and scroll down to the calendar and start to use some of the additional attributes and I'm actually going to do do with content assist I'll go ahead and specify mode and I'll specify that I want the mode to be in line. So now if I were to reload this UI, let's say new payment, now you'll see that the calendar is actually in line. Um, and uh, so it's just an example of you know there's a lot of things that you can do with prime faces and so while the default implementation that that's provided might uh, gives you a good starting point you know you're encouraged to go and take a look at all of the other capabilities that are available with uh, with JSF and prime faces um, one of the things you'll also notice is that we're using I already pointed out that we're using um, one of the you know prime faces themes in this uh, in in 
in the scaffolded applications. But if you want to change it to a different theme, that's really easy for you to do. You can basically, if we take a look at, you know, here's a full list of themes that are automatically included in your application. And I'm going to go ahead and change the SAM theme that we're using, and I'm going to switch it to, um, to UI lightness and now if I um, you know, go back and I reload this form we'll see that the form now has a new look and feel and that was done and that my whole application will be affected by that one change so it's a really easy way of kind of changing the look and feel so you're not stuck with what we generate as a matter of fact we uh, really wanted to make sure that what we generate is very generic and that we're uh, letting prime faces do you know apply the themes as it you know as it's configured um, so um, and one of the other tips might be that you know once you define once you identify the theme that you want to use go ahead and delete the all of the other themes um, in order to minimize the deployment of your you know the, the size of the deployment um, delete the themes that you'd have no intentions of using in your application. Uh, we, we, we throw a whole bunch of them into your project for you um, and we leave it to you to kind of uh, you know, remove the ones that you're not interested in using anymore. Um, and uh, the one last thing I guess is uh, you know definitely make use of the um, uh, you know of prime faces you know in the payment for example uh, one of the fields that we have here is um, is check number and it will um, you know really has it's basically free form there really aren't any rules or any masks or anything like that applied to this but if you want to start to leverage some of the other prime faces UI components you can do that by doing something like this so instead of using the um, the JSF component go ahead and use the uh, prime faces input mask and um, then you can specify what you want as the mask so we'll go ahead and use content assist here for mask and then I'll specify something like this here and now when I reload the UI you'll see that it's actually prompting me that it, as I start to type in characters which you can't see but I'm actually hitting on the letters on my keyboard and it's not accepting these but as I start typing in numbers you see that it starts using the mask um, so it's ways that you can kind of start to constrain um, what it is that people can type into these different fields so these are just one of many examples of the types of things that you can do with JSF and prime faces and so I just wanted to kind of give you something to get started with uh, as you explore what was generated and um, and then leave it to you to you know to use whatever is appropriate for you know your requirements um, for you know in the application that you're generating. That concludes part two of the JSF and Prime Faces screencast. If you'd like to see part one, or you'd like to see any of the other screencasts that we have available, please check out the My Eclipse for Spring YouTube channel. If you're interested in giving My Eclipse for Spring a try, you can please go to the following URL where you will learn more about My Eclipse for Spring and you can also download a 30-day trial edition. And if you're interested in keeping track of what's going on with uh, Genu Tech and Skyway Software, please uh, follow us at, at Genu Tech and at Skyway Software. Thank you very much.
That concludes part one of the JSF and Prime Faces code generation screencast. Um, if you're interested in trying out My Clips for Spring, you can go to the following URL. And if you're interested in seeing um, part two of the screencast or any of the other screencasts from My Clips for Spring, please visit the My Clips for Spring YouTube channel. Um, and you can also follow us on Twitter at, at Genuatech or at Skyway Software. Thank you very much.